Hello, we're coming to you live today from the Okanagan Valley, and we're in West Kelowna, BC, and we're outside. It's very warm today, and we have the sights and sounds around us of what's happening in the community, but we thought that might be a great way to start our conversation. So we'll get started with the podcast. Today, we're talking about supporting family with compassionate living. And I'm excited to have my sister back again, Charlene. And uh, we're happy to be extending our conversations. As families, we have life cycles that we weave through as the generations enter and leave us. And we're excited by the announcement of a new baby, or we're worried about the ability of this new being being able to thrive and be nourished. We have children growing and learning that we hope will achieve a strong education as well as love and nurturing in their developing years. And we hope they will become strong and resilient as adults. Our parents become grandparents and we endeavor to support healthy aging and thriving into the later years. All of these dreams and ideations depend on our resources and our opportunities. For those listening to the podcast, family dynamics may be complicated and challenging, or they may be rewarding and fruitful. Most of us attentive to this conversation will have choices, resources, and opportunities. But what if our hopes and dreams do not have all that we need? What if we strive each day for the opportunity to just survive? These are tough ideas to face. Today, Charlene and I are going to share more about the Moyo family and their story in Malawi, Africa. She has an update on the family and a new introduction to share with us as we explore the idea of compassionate living and being our very best to help others to thrive and be successful in their own world. You're listening to Be Well with Michelle Greenwell. This is sponsored by Dance Debut Inc. and the Cape Breton Tea Company. Thank you so much, Charlene, for sharing this conversation again. Well, thanks for having me again. Uh, and I really appreciate the opportunity to, to talk about this family that I love so much. And really, the, the topics of, of uh, resources and, and opportunities are, are really appropriate here. Uh, one important thing that happened uh, since the, our last podcast on this family, uh, sadly, is, is that uh, Mum Moyo, the grandma in the family, passed away in June which was, was really tragic for the family. And it happened at a time when Peter, the, uh, the only adult male in the family, was en route to one hospital in a crisis, and his wife was, was in another hospital. And, and Mom Moyo, as we called her, the grandma, was actually going to be a guardian at the hospital with with one of them, I'm not sure which one, and she suffered a cardiac arrest at, at the time and, and tragically died. And she was someone that they, the whole family, looked up to and respected as, as really sort of the matriarch of the family. And uh, tragically, Peter wasn't able to attend his mom's funeral. And, and I, I just received a message from the family that, that there was a tragedy in the family and uh, and that there was a cardiac arrest on the way to the hospital. And I didn't hear who it was or what had happened. I didn't know if it was Peter, if it was Stella, if it was Mum Moyo, the grandma. And, and I just kept hearing, there's a tragedy, there's a cardiac arrest, and, and that there's a death. And I was... I was just shocked and, and, and asked, you know, saying, you know, I'm, I'm so sorry and my condolences and, and who, who have we lost? And then I finally heard that it was, it was Mom Moyo. And, and uh, I got messages, you know, our hands are akimbo, is, is the messages I kept getting and that they were, they just didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was the way that whole story started unfolding. Mm -hmm. And then the family trying to pull themselves t together, which is really what always seems to happen, is the family pulls themselves together. And, and, uh, and the women who were still at home and the children 
um, hold it together. And in that climate, which is a very, very hot climate, funerals happen the next day. Mm -hmm. So it, it really has to happen immediately because it's so hot. So she was buried right away and, and they carried on from there. Yeah, very tragic. And would she have been brought back to the village if they were en route to the hospital or? Yeah, she would have been brought back to the village. Yeah. Okay. So as we go forward, that was one update, um, which was hard to kind of bring together, but we wanted to expand our conversation um, as, as this family is one example of many trying to thrive and survive. And um, so I always like to start the podcast with an affirmation and it, um, I cut the deck of cards, not knowing what's going to come up, but I'm hoping that that's going to contribute to the conversation, but also to those people listening who have maybe several similar struggles going on in their own lives. Um, this may be, may be hard to listen to and also to think about and reflect within your, your own family, what's happening. And so hopefully that'll help, but it's, um, when I went to pull the cards this time and it's from the affirmations for the body and biofield deck. So it's the deck that you can find on my website in the shop at dancedebut.com. But what I wanted you to have to hold and to have the color and resilience of is this picture. And in it, um, for those people on the podcast that are listening, there's a whole bunch of white spheres. And for those people who really um, feel the presence of others coming to them, you can let those spheres be a representative of all the people who are supporting and bringing things forward for the family, but also for those who have passed and who continue to um, bring energetic support from where they are. And this has a rainbow of color coming out, which is yellow, pink, green, orange. It's really beautiful. Um, so this is for the jaw and the sphenoid, and the jaw really how we speak our truth, but also the sphenoid is all the energy centers run right through that center part of the body. And so being able to just get that open flow happening so that we can voice what we need to voice and being able to hear what we need to hear um, and, and bring about the energy of that. So our affirmation is when we resonate with our truth, there's a flow and a contentment that overrides all experience. Be aware of the true path and what it feels like to be on it. So now what we're going to do is uh, move from the affirmation, we're going to move to the T. And I think we can uh, take the Mission for Change community that was created for the Moyo family as a fundraiser, but we'd like to do it as a toast to Mama Moyo and uh, her memory. So we have the iced tea version today. There we go. To Mama Moyo and all she did for the family. Okay, so in the last episode, Charlene, we talked about um, educating ourselves and on how we can help others in where they're at. And we had talked about um, building the cement bricks uh, to help increase the longevity of their small huts, um, which were usually ravaged by rains yes. and uh, vicious storms. So today we're gonna shift the focus um, over into something still around the idea of resources, but you wanted to really expand the idea of what people think about as resource. Right, and um, a lot of people feel like they, they have to have a lot of resources to be able to help other people. And I think that's, that's something people get stuck on, that you have to be successful and have a lot yourself before you can really reach out and help other people. Uh, and that, I'm, I'm trying to let people know that you don't have to. Um, in fact, I probably do more to help other people now when I have less than I did when I had more. And just due to like circumstances, at this point in my life, I have less than I had 20 years ago, probably, just due to, to various circumstances. And so now when I'm struggling for various reasons for my own resources, is a time when I actually am contributing more to other people and to this family in particular in Malawi. And it's also something where um, 
people will say, well, oh, but I've, you know, I'm, I'm struggling myself with um, depression or stress or uh, I'm, I'm too tired. I've got these illnesses. I, you know, I've, I've just got too much on my plate. But it's actually something that you can do to, to relieve some of those things and to take yourself out of being so egocentric and so concentrated on your own troubles and issues and your own woe is me, you know, and, and people really build themselves into a place of self-pity and, and uh, it sort of builds on itself and it's really hard to get dig yourself out of that hole. And if instead you take some time to focus outside of yourself and focus on others, it can actually be healing for yourself within by doing that and by looking to others to, to help them and to build them up, in the end, can build yourself up as well. And uh, in part, that's, that's what this does for me, is it's healing for me to help other people. And to help this family is, is it incredibly rewarding for me. So it's, it helps them, but it helps me. Mm -hmm. So in, it's sort of a self-fulfilling pro prophecy to, to do something for them. And what, what to us would be quite a small resource, what to us would be maybe a, a pizza or uh, you know, a, a paperback book or something, a small purchase here is a you know, a, a sack of grain that will feed a family of 15 for two weeks there. Mm -hmm. Or um, will be uh, gardening tools that will hoe the garden for the next five years there. It, it's life-changing there. Here it's, you know, coffee for the office for today. Mm -hmm. It's nothing really. It's, it's really inconsequential here. It's life changing there, which is really quite quite amazing and shocking. For the, normally, I've been ch chatting with one of the senior adults in Malawi. You know, originally I was speaking with with Stephen and his wife Maria, uh, and we were we we're looking at how can we improve their family. Stephen passed away, and uh, then I was speaking with Peter, his brother and still Maria, then Peter's been so sick this year. Then I started speaking with his wife, Stella. Stella and Peter have both been so sick this year. Uh, and now Maria is also so sick. Mm -hmm. So I've been speaking with another sister, uh, Grace. And each time it's building a new relationship and learning about that person. And in speaking with Grace, one of the things that's really stood out is just how little resources there are and how much the individual has to step up and not look at themselves in their, in their culture and in their community. They have to put themselves aside and really look at the family unit and say, what does the family need? Mm -hmm. When I started talking with Grace, and asking a little bit about her, to learn about her. I started asking about her education and, and she, you know, how far did she get in her education? And she got far enough to be able to read and write. But then when Stephen died, she stopped school because the family needed her. So mm -hmm. she had to stop school in order to be able to uh, come home and help with looking after the young children and do the laundry for the young children and to help with their feeding and, and their laundry and their care. So the family responsibilities. It wasn't about what she needed. Mm -hmm. It was about the resources for the family. And it's such a different perspective than, than here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with, well, but that's going to affect my life, you know? Yeah. And there's no sense in any of her conversation about what that impact was for her. It's all about what does the family need and how are we going to make these other people well mm -hmm. to make the family whole. Mm -hmm. uh, she, she, I asked her for information on other family members and, and how 
they've ended up orphaned, what's happened to their parents, you know, and, and the list of illnesses that they've had to survive and how all these children got orphaned and that this family hasn't given up. They haven't let the children go to the orphanages. Mm -hmm. They've just kept the children home mm -hmm. and kept trying to keep the family together. The family together. So there's so many children and so many people that are growing up in this family where the parents have died, whether it's cholera, hepatitis, tuberculosis, um, malaria, all things that we have medicines and capabilities of quickly overcoming. Yes. Yeah. The COVID, Stephen died of COVID. Mm -hmm. there, there's things that people here are surviving, people there aren't. Mm -hmm. And it's a family that they, they could have, there's a lot of orphanages there. Mm -hmm. they, they could have said, we just can't deal with this anymore. Mm -hmm. We don't have the, and they don't have the resources, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but they still keep saying, you know, this is, you know, our brother's or our sister's child. Um, some of the, some of the children, their, their mothers died in childbirth. Mm -hmm. That certainly happens a lot as well. Um, some of their parents died of HIV or AIDS as well, too. Mm -hmm. So these are all things that people are living with or surviving here. And right now we're looking at, there's 15 family members. Yes. That are living together um, as, yes. as that extended family brought yes. in together. Yes. Um, so it's not just their little nucleus, but an extended family. Yeah. yeah. There's 15 of them. Yes. And with Robert sick, Robert being, Peter. sorry, with Peter, Peter sick, Peter um, being the lead of the family. He's not there to actually lead. No, and he hasn't been most of this year. He's been in hospital, and it, from all of the symptoms and discussions that I've had, it appears that I think he likely has type 2 diabetes. Okay. And so, because he, he was talking about trouble with his feet and pains in his feet. and Yeah, yeah. Um, he's had some, some seizures and blackouts. Um, there, there was a lot of symptoms that when we went through them mm -hmm. yeah so yeah. let's let's move our audience forward yes <laughs> after after listening to the yes. trials of the moyle family it's it's overwhelming because it, it gets, really is it's overwhelming yeah. for us because we're we're trying to reach out and support in the best way possible and you're trying to build those resources oftentimes you're trying to give them a resource but then it becomes an emergency and then the resources have to go to the emergency so um but from the perspective of people that are that are listening today and mm. they kind of go about their day and they always do it this way they just stop pick up what they need um the one-time use items that we all have mm -hmm. um just ways what are some ways that you'd like to recommend people think a little bit differently about the luxury of their resources I think there's a lot of resources that we don't really need. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that um, are throwaway things for us. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of things like paper towels and things like that, you know, that we could be using rags, you know, that we buy over and over. Mm -hmm. uh, and is it really necessary? And if we don't really need those things, could we put that money into something else where we could help somebody? Mm -hmm. You know, or, and we see a lot of that stuff now where there's reusable cups and things like that instead of the, the takeaways. Or, you know, can, are there, there um, takeout foods that maybe we don't need all the time anymore? Mm -hmm. And that we could say, you know, instead of doing that, I'm going to give something. Mm -hmm. Or there's a lot of, of uh, you know, really poor quality things, mm -hmm. throwaway things, mm -hmm. um, you know, too many toys mm -hmm. and things like that, where maybe kids could get behind supporting mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and I know there are some people that, that do that. They have kids get behind a, a cause and, and help with a cause. Yeah. And, and kids really jump into that yeah, and, and enjoy doing, doing that and, and supporting a cause, whether it's this cause 
or what is a, a different Another cause, community yeah. cause, or things like that. And I, I saw an interesting statistic recently about the, the amount of clothes that everyone has now compared to in the 80s is, is hugely mm -hmm. inflated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, but, but that we only wear something like 20% of our, our closet. Yeah. But and we like, hold on to a lot of items thinking we'll wear it once again. Yeah. And then we actually don't when it could have gone to people who could be wearing it, who might need it. Yeah. And we're holding that back. Yeah. It's just a lot of materialism that just mm -hmm. doesn't really make sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of seasonal decoration, which I'm not saying take away seasonal decoration, but there's just a lot of excessive mm -hmm. things. And, you know, when you go to, to purchase some of those things, you think, you know, do I need all 10 of these things? You mm -hmm. know, will all 10 of these things bring me huge joy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, will a couple of them do just as much? Mm -hmm. And that excess, would that be able to provide some resources somewhere else? Mm -hmm. Because when you see the, the discrepancies in the world and you think, you know what? That little bit difference, you know, that, that 20 or $30 that I would have spent for some food here, maybe that would have saved a life there. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what we're really talking about is, it's not just cutting your budget back because a lot of us have had to do that in the last couple of years is really cut the budget back, but it's then about really looking at it. How are we spending our money and how are we supporting others with what we do? And are mm -hmm. we doing it with action and are, <laughs> are we doing it lip service? And then we turn around and do something completely opposite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I was thinking about to the fact that for them to get water, they've got to go every day. They've got to walk a couple of kilometers to get the water and then walk back with it. Um, and, and then boil it so that it's even say palatable. Yeah. Yes. Um, and we're sitting here today uh, in extreme heat. It's in the 30s today, which is not as hot as what they're enduring. And they're going to do that walk. And I was thinking, OK, what would it be like to to make that walk, to carry what you're going to have to carry, to bring it back and then all the work just to get the water? And it's still not good water. Yeah, it's still a high salt content water. Right. And that's for the water, both that you're going to drink, that you're going to bathe in, that you're going to use for your garden, mm -hmm. for everything that you're mm -hmm. going to cook with, mm -hmm. all your water needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and how easy we turn the tap on. and Yeah. Or we just had, and this is why we did it outside, right? You're hearing mm -hmm. all the cars, or you may be hearing the cars that are going by and all the neighbors coming going. So I need to go pick something up. I'm just going to jump in my car. And I'm just going to go yes. and starting to think about, do you really need to go? Can you wait until you can put all your errands together? And with the money that and time that you saved with that, what could you contribute to? What some other pieces you could bring forward? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's really quite amazing. Um, and the, the family, um, the Moyo family are, are certainly grateful. Um, they ask for prayers. Mm -hmm. You know, and I've told them, no, you know, I, they certainly have my prayers, but that I'm working to do more. Mm -hmm. And so for those people listening, if you can add them to your prayer list, that would be lovely. And if you want to expand that and add their village, um, because they're one family in the village. So that's, there's more stories um, that expand even more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so from that topic then, we're, we're thinking about how people are starting to make some different choices and they're, they're thinking about resources and they're thinking about what they're doing. Let's talk a little bit just about what happens inside when we start to make those changes. And um, I was sharing that I've been reading, um, I can't remember the exact title, but it's, it's the conversation that Archbishop um, uh, Desmond, Desmond Tutu, Tutu and um, the Dalai Lama had around joy. So they spent a week together to discuss what is the actual context of joy and how does it get created. And really that that whole piece has to come from the inside and how you give out, which is why we're talking about compassionate living um, and trying to bring that idea that joy is not in what we're mechanically doing every day, but in what we're 
spiritually and essence wise bringing to our conversations and our actions every day. Um, do you want to expand that? But I think it really comes comes down to a little bit of what I talked about earlier that doing something for somebody else instead of focusing so much on yourself and and seeing that you're having an impact on these other people that really turns around how you're feeling inside. So if you're a little bit stuck in where you're at, you're feeling down or you've got depression, I think trying to, to get out of your own head and get out of your, your own place of misery or, or frustration, anything like that, if you can start to see the results somewhere else, you can start to see that you're having an impact, then it makes a difference. Just the, the ability to say, you know, there's, there's people living, in this case, around the world, the total opposite around the world, you know, complete opposite timeline, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Time, uh, time of day to us, you know, as I'm going to sleep, they're getting up, uh, and they're alive because of the work that we put in. Mm -hmm. Literally, they're alive because of, of what we do here. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing. And when I see, they send pictures of David, and David's about 12 years old, so I've known him half his life now. Mm -hmm. And he's just like a, like, he's just like a, a, a firefly, like he's just like a spark of joy. I've not ever seen a picture of David since the first time I met him mm -hmm. online mm -hmm. um, without like the biggest smile on his face. Like, just seeing him lights you up. Mm -hmm. And he's taken it on himself that he's going to keep the garden going for the family. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a kid who, like, here he'd be, like, riding his bike and just going off with his friends. And he's single-handed, well, not, not single-handedly, because he's, you know, recruiting other family members to, mm -hmm. to be watering the plants and, and, and gardening. But he's, he's taken on the garden for himself, mm -hmm. that this is his task to keep, to keep mm -hmm. the cabbage going, to keep to keep the tomatoes going, mm -hmm. all of this to to keep trying to feed the family, mm -hmm. while the the grown ups, his mom is in the hospital now with tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. His uncle, the the one man in the family, is in hospital, and here this little boy mm -hmm. is is hoeing, he's pruning, he's watering, and he does it all with the biggest smile. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing. Mm -hmm. And that, I mean, it just thrills me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's so inquisitive. He wants to know everything about science. Mm -hmm. he, he loves all of, he's, he's just thirsting for knowledge. Mm -hmm. he's, he, he loves school. He loves engineering stuff. Uh, and and I, you know, I, when I talk with them, I say, you know, he's going he's gonna to do something that changes something in the world. Mm -hmm. like, I just feel it. Yeah. I know it. Yeah. You know, and that's exciting to me. Yeah. And that's like, that's very rewarding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know that I've had an impact on him mm -hmm. and he has an impact on me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's totally thrilling. Yeah. You know, and that's the kind of reward that people can have. Mm -hmm. And who would have ever expected that? Yes. So this little exactly. boy in Malawi around the world totally makes me happy. Yeah. Yeah. So anybody can have that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm thinking about the twins. Yeah. You know, how old are the twins now? Um, they just turned six. Okay. Yeah, it was their birthday about, uh, about a week ago. Yeah. Okay. And so thinking about what they're watching in their older brother. Yes. And how they're learning. Yes. Yeah. And that, and what they're doing too with the gardening is what, you were able to figure out how to make those gardens work with less water. Yes. So he's, he's actually taking the technology you were able to share with them and create the space for his family to be able to thrive on that. Yes. Some of the, some of the gardening that they're doing is in keyhole gardens, which was, I never knew about it before I started chatting with them either. Some of the gardening is traditional gardening that mm -hmm. they're doing as well. And some is keyhole gardening. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's quite amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unlike my garden here, which 
unfortunately it's not as good <laughs> <laughs> i have an abundant one but i haven't had a chance to get into it yeah. so um yeah and again there's there's the example right i'm looking for enough time and and uh the resource is just thriving there if i could just package it all up and send it and i yeah. have water that's you know 10 steps away from the plants yeah and i can't make it successful and here they have they don't have the resources yeah but for them it's life or death mm -hmm. and and there the 12 year old is mm -hmm. making it work mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's amazing yeah and focusing on what he can do yeah. and it's very inspirational mm -hmm. yeah yeah so as we bring this topic to a close and um think about how you might want to change the way you may be doing a couple of regular habits that could be more resourceful or uh life-changing um we invite you to think about uh the tea um that we've created that if you want to uh, begin selling that tea you want to purchase some tea whatever you want to do that you could help take that forward then we invite you to go to the cape breton tea.ca website and that'll get you the mission for change tea if you want to order it online and otherwise charlene has it here in west Kelowna. yes and how can they contact you uh they can contact me uh, just through facebook Perfect. So you're looking for Charlene Waynes on Facebook, West Kelowna. And um, the other piece then too would be for you to just think about um, if you wanted to do anything bigger than that, you could go to Stephen Moyo's Mission for Change GoFundMe. And from that place, wherever there's um, money coming in, Charlene is taking that and prioritizing where the needs are and what needs to happen next. And we do have we do have some goals in mind, but those goals continue to be kiboshed by the wellness of the adults in the family. And the and children, the children have ended up mm -hmm. with different illnesses as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're doing our best to see how far we can get it. But the hippo rollers and the key gardens are two key pieces, as well as the knowledge that you've been able to provide to the cement bricks, um, although they, can't go and make those bricks yet. So they're still without a home. So um, we still have that, that process. But if there's some way that you could support, we welcome you to participate that way. And if it's not by any funds, then we have the prayers that could go forward for the family and the village. And then we also have what you could be contributing to in the community where you are. And even thinking about how you could be different within your own family and maybe there's some ways that you could help some of the people in your family that might be struggling and uh, or some people that are in relation to the family, close family friends, that that might also make a difference. So we invite you to think about how you could be going differently from there. Okay, anything else you want to add before we close today? No, I think that's it. Everybody can make a difference. Mm -hmm. It's really, really quite an easy step and it makes you feel much better. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's worth it. So thank you for listening to us live with the community around us, bringing in the sights and sounds of, of what's going on. And uh, we invite you to consider moving differently. But today, instead of giving you a movement action, which I typically would say, uh, we invite you to think about the patterns or habits that you have that maybe don't need to be there because of the abundance that you might have or the way that you use resources. And so our action today would be maybe think differently, see what you can do with that. So with that, season three is devoted to transformation and the process that happens when people reach into their authentic selves and create magic. And our season has several, each month, several different themes that we're running through. So we hope that you'll come back to listen to the other ideas as we're building up to how can you be transforming your life and how can you be transforming the lives of others by the actions and thoughts that you have. Thank you for joining us, and this is Be Well with Michelle Greenwell, wishing you well-being. Take care, and thank you for being here. <laughs>